Himanshi kindly felicitate uh, Marco sir. Uh, thank you for the presenters, very interesting element. So, and a uh, few thoughts from, our, from my side, more thoughts than assumptions or guidance, but I think it's from collective reflection that you find the next steps and the way forward. So, the first of all, and the assumption that we have is that we live in a, a fast pacing, changing world. Digitalization, access to information goes along with access to substance and drug abuse access to substance and substance that be, can be abused, it's higher now than ever. This will be the first assumption. The second uh, fact from our studies in terms of the World Drug Report is that obviously um, the re drug use reported on young children is higher than ever. So since all the years that UNIDIS is doing epidemiological studies, this is the time of our existence that we have more prevalence use, self-reported, etc. on use on children. Including from the age to 15 and 16, we're talking about about 5% of uh, reported of substance abuse. Another thing that I want to mention is, and I think this is also important, is the research, and I think the previous speakers alluded to this, is that the protective factors are the more important element to avoid any drug abuse disorder in the future. And this is, uh, I would say, something that comes along with one of the priorities that we see in terms of UNODC programming, is to build and empower protective factors. The fourth element that we mentioned in here, and I think uh, your study reveals that, is that beyond, and it's very important, the formal education sector to shape behaviors, to give social life skills orientation, but the parenting element and allowing the parents to know how to deal with correct coaching or orientation of their children is an essential, essential protective factor to avoid drug abuse disorders. And I think this goes along also with the international standards of prevention of drug abuse. It's also part of several of the publications of UNODC and I think also the joint publications of UNODC and WHO on standards of treatment of drug use and also prevention of drug use. Um, another aspect that I want to, to mention that we try to address and try to work with the different stakeholders. This is not specifically a responsibility of the state that takes the ownership and the full ownership to actually address drug abuse related disorders collective shared responsibility of all sectors of society, including sectors that are not state-owned. So I think I want also to mention this as an essential element uh, from our perspective. Um, increased safe, stable and nourishing relationship between children, their parents and caregivers is one of the seven most efficient strategies to prevent drug abuse disorders and also part of the psychological treatment when the disorders are obviously to be addressed. And of course this is something for us, it's important. Families, educators, not only are protective factors, but are also seen as a piece of the puzzle for the solution in actually identifying coping mechanisms with the children, give them the right language and the right tools to address when they are, for instance, under peer pressure. When, for instance, they are facing an increased availability of substances, because it's proven that the increased availability of substance will have an impact on increase of use of those substances. So again, and this comes also from your study, so again, also giving the right skill sets is important to avoid uh, the access and obviously the first experiences with substances of abuse. Um, of course, you know, this is being working with member state, non-state actors in different settings from prevention, from treatment, from criminal justice responses, from reintegration, rehabilitation, etc. But uh, I think the key message from my side is this is a shared responsibility, a responsibility that each one of us and any sector of the society 
have an essential element to play and a role to play. And of course, school settings, strong parenting, and enabling the parentings to improve their skills to fulfill their role as a parent is something that we need to continue to empower. And finally, let's zoom out. Let's put ourselves, some of us are parents and teachers. As a teacher, the teacher has to prepare lessons, to deliver lessons, to follow curriculum, to follow the standards of teaching that they are from the central government of this government part of the curriculum. And besides that, they need to have tools to address non-school related issues like drug abuse related disorders or unlawful behavior. So what I'm trying to say is our collective responsibility to give the tools to teachers, how to address those inter items and those aspects beyond what is their curriculum obligation. And this is what is extremely important, to give them the tools, the resources to teach and talk about those su subjects on their school uh, behavior. And the same with parents. You, I think you mentioned this, parents want to know how they should discuss this with their children. How should they have an informed discussion with their children and perceive indicators of risk and how to address them. So our role as collective and obviously as UNODC is to provide those tools to assist working with other partners to create those tools to facilitate this learning and also the behavioral change of children. So thank you very much. I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much for thank coming. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.